Peace Deep Minds 255 here. Today we're talking about five takeaways from the interview with Hiroki, producer of DBFZ at the beginning of the DBF Nationals Spain playoffs. And they asked her a few questions and I figured I wanted to cover those more in depth. One of the first things they asked her was, how do you decide which characters get put into the game? And she stated that she has great concerns about players' reactions. She obtains information from the web, events like the Pro Tour, or requests like, please put this character in the game, and that she takes all of those feedbacks serious, and they're implementing them as uh, the first build of information. So they're watching, and and they take what we have to say as a community serious. That's important. With that being said though, she also mentioned that she can't take all requests. That from the start, they wanted characters who may be popular in the Dragon Ball series. And that maybe says that they could deviate from that, right? But generally they want characters who are popular from the Dragon Ball series. But they also attach to that a lot of importance to what unique an interesting value they can add as a character in a fighting game. So those are the two things that she mainly considers when they try to pick a character and add them to the game. So the second thing I want to cover that she discussed was transformations. I think this is pretty important considering the lore of Dragon Ball as a franchise and as it regards merchandise and this is why. Because character sells and people will pay for an SS4 Goku versus a base Goku or UI Goku or Super Saiyan level 3 Goku. I mean, anything Goku. So I also think that one of the reasons why, even though it's not mentioned in this interview, I also think that one of the reasons why they don't put transformations is so that they can have extra future downloadable characters later. That's just a theory. But look at GT Goku as an example. Everybody won SSJ4 Goku. And people were only mainly excited about GT Goku because he wanted Super Saiyan Level 4 Goku, the install, right? But instead, what we got was Raku. Now, without question, Super Saiyan Level 4 Goku would be a selling character. And yes, it's a different character, but come on. They wanted that money, and I'm happy that if they make an SS4 character, I want him to be separate, personally. So I don't have too much complaints about that, but when we're thinking about transformations, I think that's that's something you need to keep in mind, right? They wanted that money. Hiroki continues and says, as it regards balancing the game and adding the character, right, and, and transformations, she said it would be hard to keep the balance of the game so we couldn't keep it. And I can kind of see that, right? Um, GT Goku's already a nightmare. And then we install Super Saiyan Level 4, who's supposed to be the stronger version of GT Goku. Now we have a bigger nightmare, and players love to exploit things. Three, the third thing I like to talk about from the interview, uh, the question was asked, with regard to balance, when something game-changing is discovered, what is the general reaction from the developer's office? So she acknowledged first that several things were discovered in the game that they didn't know about. But once again, they can't process all requests because of two reasons. One, they have to check, she said, if it's technically doable from an overall game balance perspective, right? And then second, if they make that modification, does it alter the fun of the game that they originally wanted? And only after taking those comprehensive judgments, she said, make the decision to include or not that change into an update. And I think that's fair. Right? I don't know why they haven't nerfed Kid Bull the way they did Bardock, but maybe there's something technically undoable there. I don't know, but those are definitely two good reasons. Another feature would be to fight while flying. She said, we prepared different systems slash attacks to support aerial combat, but it wasn't possible to stay and fight in the air the whole match. So if we decide to add such a feature next time, I'm sure we'll be able to deliver a new type of experience. I love these statements because it does suggest either a new season of Dragon Ball Fighter Z, or at least maybe Fighters 2. And I love this because they are thinking of adding system mechanics that we the fans haven't thought of. I don't think I've seen or heard in any videos 
in the fighting game community discussing the idea of flying in the air. So that says to me that Hiroki and Arc System got some ideas to keep the game fresh and new, and that's what we need. And I would definitely want more stages for one. She also mentioned adding a new online experience. And she also said that they're already planning a new online event. Maybe that's going to be all the champions from the playoffs having a, a, a final championship match. That would be pretty cool. Now, the last thing they asked Hiroki was kind of a, a fun question, but there's some insidious suggestions and insights from this question. They asked her what characters does she play with in Dragon Ball Fighters. And she first said Goku Black. <clears throat> now, <laughs> when she said Goku Black, I, was, I, I don't know about you, I was looking at the screen like, you play with Goku Black? Like, uh, are you playing with Japan players? Players from Japan with Goku Black? And you, you, you're not getting mints? Maybe she knows some developer secrets or whatever the case is. But um, hopefully she mentioned Goku Black because as someone who pays attention to the community, he needs buffs. So she's been playing with him from the beginning, as she says. Hopefully she's noticed he needs buffs. She said Vegeta and Yamcha. No complaints. But then she says something that I thought was pretty insidious. She says she likes fighting with female characters because she has been playing with Kefla and Videl but feels like the female synergy is missing. Now you may call this a theory concern, but let's call it what it is. That suggests that if the synergy is missing, maybe she's thinking of adding another female. And I'm all right with the ideas um, of the YouTubers have mentioned, right? Uh, Bowman and Mech, Rufo Monger mentioned that. But uh, I do not want Rib <laughs> I understand. I've heard from other um, YouTubers, uh, One Eye Bandit, that uh, in Japan she's supposed to be like some type of popular character. But I do not. I do not want Rib in the game. Like, there are too many other characters that can take her place, that would be a lot better. Baby Vegeta, SSJ4 Goku, Super 17, Topo, how about maybe Dizbo? Who knows, maybe even um, Moro. There are too many other players that, that are, are characters that can be added, so I wouldn't want that too much. And then finally, um, unless you've been living under a rock, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. We'll be making an announcement on December 20th, and she didn't say that there'd be a character reveal. She said that they'll be making an announcement. So maybe there'll be a character reveal. Probably, most likely. But she definitely said that the uh, character's release date will probably be sometime in January. Anyway, this is DeepMind255. Out. One.